I'm Biochar Bob. I travel around the world to meet and tell the stories of people who use biochar. They're using the stove right now, so let's check it out. To help their gardens and crops grow. So I just picked up one of these cacao plants and you can improve see soils, clean their drinking water, and help the world fight the effects of global warming. Follow me as I crisscross Costa Rica in a terribly suited rental vehicle. Insurance! <laughs> Accidentally eat worms. <laughs> and meet local farmers, researchers, artisans, and agriculturists, and even some animals. You like biochar? Who use biochar in their everyday lives. In May of 2011, I was getting ready to graduate high school. But instead of spending the last month of it in a classroom, I spent it living in Costa Rica on a permaculture farm, learning how to grow food in harmony with nature. Who's that? Hey! Hey! So good to see you! How you doing, good. man? Tristan, good. the Frenchman who housed me, taught me so much. But what I taught him was how to make biochar. Using simple technology like a cook stove, farmers can turn their waste into a powerful soil amendment that can last for hundreds of years. Yeah, I really like the biochar idea, Bob, because it's like um, you can cook and you make biochar. And more than this, it's carbon negative. And after you can use it for the plant. All this bed is like mixed with like biochar. Yeah, all this. Oh yeah. Every time I use this, I'm happy because I'm like, I'm, this carbon is not going to go back for a long time, you know. And Stay I in feel, the soil. for me, I feel like very, very happy to do something like this because it's like uh, it's another step in uh, in being carbon negative. And of course, the plants like it. <gasps> and this is like they call it belle in some uh, some uh, Polynesian island. So they use it as basically people over there they don't grow any vegetables they only grow this. It's so like, you eat this. This is like 23% protein, you know, and like 23% protein. And it's full of things, you know, like of goodness. Rapid. Permaculture is the principle of operating while focusing on permanence and longevity, which naturally emphasizes environmental responsibility. Oh, they call it Indian licorice. One, uh, will that one you die. You? Yeah, 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 yeah. Strongest poison in the non in the tropics. No antidotes. You, need, you can try the leaf, it's super sweet. It's like they use it in Yemen and they do like some. Uh, oh, oh my gosh! Yeah, they do some. Uh, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Farming, when founded on this concept, focuses on building natural ecosystems that are sustainable and self sufficient, allowing the forces of nature to empower the landscape rather than using chemicals and techniques that aim to control and manipulate it. A few years ago, we had like a landslide here, you know. And really? Yeah. Global warming is, you know, it's like affecting us. And, but like biochar too is helping us to like, to deal with this. And this is a good thing. You like actually do biochar with carbon negative and using biochar and you don't use oil, you know. You have like a double, double effect. Double, right. Yeah, yeah. Tristan told me that the farm next to his had recently slashed and burned the jungle to plant a cornfield. When I was here back in May, they had just clear cut all of this which was originally very similar to what we saw at Tristan's. You can obviously see there is a massive lack of biodiversity of ecosystem of habitat here. And all the soil, every time it rains, just washes out. Then eventually what they do, they plant the corn. Okay, now they're going to harvest it and they're going to let nature grow back. And maybe in two years, they're going to cut it and burn it again. Hmm. Because basically they need to do this way because like this, the soil is going to be very bad for many years. <laughs> this corn anyway is for like chickens, you know, it's not even for like human consumption. Really? Yeah. So they cut down the forest for this? Yeah. Like basically humans, we are like making our lives out. Yeah. We're why growing corn? <laughs> you know, like why growing corn? Like to feed chickens, but actually eating my leaf over there, I get more protein than eating chicken. <laughs> and it's so easy, I have nothing to do, just like to plant a stick and, and, and graze some leaves, you know, and, and, and basically we do all this crazy work and you can lo lose it like with a heavy rain or anything, you know, and animals eat it. And at the end, you know, for not a lot of food. But more I do what I'm doing here, more I realize, wow. You know, like it's so easy, abundance exists for real, you know. It's, like it's not something like we don't exist, like, like basically this is like paradise. Already, you know, the earth is paradise. 
Next, we set off to visit Cash, a low-impact home designer who is using biochar in his builds. We use our almost four-wheel drive vehicle to almost get up the mountain. Cash built homes in the US for many years, but what he noticed was that there was massive amounts of waste and significant environmental impact. He developed the barefoot design, which focuses on minimizing waste and respecting the surroundings, like this building for example, which is elevated off the ground and shaped specifically to avoid cutting down trees or even disturbing their roots. He's using biochar to clean all the water leaving the building before it empties out into the environment. We place this three inch self perforated PVC tube in. We fill the surrounding cavity with the biochar. So the water leaches into here, comes back up through this pipe, and then in theory, the biochar is going to filter it. Okay, okay. So, so the idea is to make the minimum impact on, minimum the, impact on, the, on the environment. Uh, what you've done is you've rigged uh, the black water system to come down right. and then fill this entire area with biochar. And the idea is that the biochar is going to help clean that water and then the excess is going to exactly. run out there and that'll be safe. Ideally. Safe. <laughs> Ideally. And then on top of it, I call it the biochar spike because afterwards, okay, say maybe a couple years down the road, Bob, um, it's fully charged. Yeah. Okay. Well, you re remove this, you move it over five feet, and you do it again. <laughs> and what's left is this supercharged biochar uh, fertilizing spike into the ground. It's, it's not that how do we leave it the same, it's how do we leave it better. Exactly. And that is tremendous. That is the key. <laughs> we hit the road again and hiked deep into the jungle to visit Lara and Thierry, both team members of the Estufa Finca project where they not only use the cook stove on a daily basis, but also use the biochar that it produces throughout their property. I put biochar all around, and then each spot I planted, I put it with the microorganism mm. to work Great. spot ah. by spot. Now most farmers, they, 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 they do things that they, they don't feel good about. I heard plenty of people they say, you know, I use this product, it's bad for the water, it's bad for our kids. And, but if we don't use it, yeah, we lose the crop. And it's, it's a bad feeling. Yeah. And it's like a food by your char. Even if I don't know what it's going to do on the soil and the plants, I have a good feeling that I'm doing something good, at least for the atmosphere and, and giving a chance for, for the future, making it better instead of knowing that I'm depleting and depleting and mining my, my soil, you know? What I really love about your approach is that it's soil first and then the plants, not plant Matter. first and then the soil, because if you can build the soil, then the plants will grow. And healthy. Yeah, and healthy and nutritious and disease-free. Of all the applications we've seen, I think what we're about to see is the dirtiest one. It's very clean indeed, it's very <laughs> clean. This is our uh, uh, dry toilet, mm -hmm. half dry. So uh, you can use it as a normal <laughs> toilet, but you use it each time we put a load of, more or less. This is bamboo biochar, put it inside. Mm -hmm. We use it, rinse with a little water, and it, it mixes there. What you can notice at the very moment now. I don't smell anything. Yeah, we, we're on top of a shit hole, I would say. <laughs> and no, no disturbance, you see? And I get this to mix in my garden. It touch it, doesn't you can smell, smell it. it. It's nice, it's clean. <laughs> it is. That biochar from making food in the kitchen comes out to here, mm -hmm. and now you can reduce your odors, mm -hmm. you can retain your nutrients mm -hmm. that you're consuming anyway, mm -hmm. and then you can use that to fertilize your garden. Yeah. That's beautiful. It comes back on top of the stove. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, truly, it is full circle, right? Yeah. I keep thinking about what Tristan said. This earth is a paradise. What we do today affects our collective future, even by the smallest decisions we make, good or bad. Biochar is one of many tools that can be used to positively affect and sustain this paradise. Throughout my biochar adventure across Costa Rica, I've seen a Stufa Finca stove have massive impact by using less fuel, which abates deforestation and reduces smoke in the home while producing biochar. 
I saw that the biochar it produces enables farmers to grow more food using fewer chemicals and fight disease in a natural way. Biochar even found niches in artisan craft and home building. What we have, this earth, it's a paradise. Let's use the tools we have, like biochar, to keep it that way.